So we've had a pretty significant amount of time since Stasis was dethroned as the subclass to use in PvP. We've still got a few stragglers that want to dabble in the darkness, and rightfully so. But what if I told you there's still a stasis build that can buff one of your abilities past the point of its maximum intended cooldown? Don't worry, it's not a game-defying cheese or something that is ultimately going to break PvP. In fact, it's something that I think is actually quite unique and honestly isn't really talked about as much as it should be. Whisper of Shards is the focus today, and its function is that shattering a stasis crystal temporarily boosts your grenade recharge rate. Shattering additional crystals will increase the duration of this benefit. In other words, each time you destroy a stasis crystal, you will get 5 seconds added to a buff on the side of your screen that says Improved Ability Regeneration. That timer will only ever go up to 10 seconds. However, each time you destroy any type of a friendly stasis crystal, 5 seconds will get added to that timer until you reach the 10 seconds, at which point any crystal afterwards will refresh the timer to 10 seconds. There's no buffer period, no cooldown on getting it to proc, nothing hindering its activation. Any time you destroy a crystal, you will get that buff to activate. So in order to really understand how to optimize the stasis grenade cooldown, there's a few things that you need to know. The first is that inherently, all stasis abilities will have slower cooldowns than their light subclass counterparts. For example, tier 10 discipline on stasis gives a 53 second cooldown on your grenade, while on any light subclass it will be a 32 second cooldown. Likewise, tier 0 discipline on stasis will have a 2 minute and 25 second cooldown, and on light subclasses tier 0 will have a cooldown of 1 minute and 43 seconds. For those of you who don't know, the optimal discipline tier to run on light subclasses is tier 4, because it is at that tier where you get the most benefit from in relation to the stats you invest in your armor. Any tier higher than 4, and you are getting diminishing returns. In other words, the more resources you invest into tiers higher than tier 4, you are getting proportionately smaller benefits. Stasis, though, is a little bit different. Let's move over to the spreadsheet to help illustrate this a little bit better. In the first column, we have each tier being represented by its corresponding number, along with the actual stat values within those tiers in the parentheses. The second column is the cooldown of each respective tier, and that's represented by minutes and seconds. The final column is the difference in value between each specific tier. I'll elaborate more on this in just a second. So you can obviously see that at tier 0 of Discipline on Stasis we have a grenade recharge rate of 2 minutes and 25 seconds. Tier 1 has a cooldown of 2 minutes and 14 seconds, which is a change of 11 seconds, and so on and so forth. So why is the difference between each tier so important? The main reason is to help us understand which tier will give us the most value, aka which tier is the optimal tier to run for your build. Like I said before, for light subclasses, that optimal tier to run for your build was tier 4. For stasis, it can actually be two different tiers. Based on the spreadsheet and the chart, you can see that tier 5 and 6 are the outliers, where we have our biggest jumps in value, or the biggest change in cooldown time. Tier 5 is a 17 second difference from tier 4, and tier 6 is a 13 second difference from tier 5. Every tier above 7 proportionately gives you less benefits for what you have to put into your armor. Let's briefly talk about how Whisper of Shards affects all that information that we just talked about. With Whisper of Shards active, each crystal destroyed provides a 5 second buff which accounts for almost 25% of our grenade charge. Obviously this caps at 10 seconds, but with enough stasis crystals around you to destroy, you can get your grenade back in as fast as 15 seconds. If you ran tier 0 discipline and were able to keep Whisper of Shards active during your whole grenade recharge, you would get it back in 18 seconds. Since the Whisper of Shards buff is a flat percentage boost to your passive grenade regen, discipline can theoretically be neglected when trying to come up with a build for whatever class you're playing. Okay, so I know I threw a bunch of math and numbers out there, so here's the simplified explanation of all of that. Stasis has slower ability cooldown times in comparison to all of the light subclasses. The optimal discipline tier to run for any light subclass build is tier 4. The optimal discipline tier to run for any of your stasis builds is tier 5 or tier 6. If you go to any tiers that are higher than these, you won't be getting as much value even though you are still decreasing the cooldown time. You'd be much better off focusing those stats on other parts of your build. Each stasis crystal you destroy with Whisper of Shards active will give you a 5 second buff that can be stacked up to 10 seconds. 5 seconds of the buff are almost equal to recharging 25% of your grenade charge. If you've made it this far into the video and you've enjoyed it, please consider liking the video. It really helps my video reach more people, so I'd really appreciate you taking a moment to tap that like button. 
Now, there's a reason why earlier I wanted to explain how discipline cooldowns worked and which tiers were most optimal, because Whisper of Shards can theoretically get you that 20 second grenade cooldown on a tier zero build if optimized correctly. It wouldn't be the smartest thing to do because if you were to ever die or not have access to stasis crystals, your passive grenade recharge rate would cool down like normal. And for what it's worth, the reason the optimal discipline tier isn't just tier 10 is because we're looking for value in our build and value can't come from maximizing all of our stats. It's just not possible. So we need to look for areas in our build where we can sacrifice some of those stats to place in other areas where they may be more valuable. So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to be explaining this build on a hunter, but in theory, it can be applied to any of the stasis subclasses with the only changes being to each class's specific aspects. Titans and hunters are probably going to see more benefit from this since they are the only classes that have a mechanic to break the crystals, but warlocks, all you really need to do is shoot the crystals and it will still activate the buff. To start off, we're going to be using Gambler's Dodge, Strafe Jump, and for our grenade, we're obviously going to use Glacier Grenades. For this particular build, we're going to be running the Shatter Dive Aspect so that we have a mechanic to shatter those crystals, and the Touch of Winter Aspect. Touch of Winter isn't totally necessary to run here, but what we're really utilizing is that extra stasis crystal that's being generated by running Touch of Winter. This build would still work fine using a different aspect. Moving down to Fragments, you can really use whatever you feel is best for your build the only necessity being Whisper of Shards. My favorites to run are Whisper of Fissures to increase that damage when we Shatter Dive those crystals, and Whisper of Chains, which essentially gives us a 25% damage resistance when standing near friendly stasis crystals or frozen enemies. Chains and Shards also give a plus 10 stat increase to recovery and resilience. Warlocks, you could probably get away with picking something other than Whisper of Fissures simply because you don't have that shatter mechanic. Either go with something else that fits your playstyle or just pick a fragment that boosts your stats in something you like. Moving on to stat distribution. Some of this is preferential, so whatever you like running is totally fine. My preference is to run high mobility and recovery, with my abilities being evenly distributed. So for my build, I run either tier 9 or tier 10 mobility, tier 4 or tier 5 resilience. These two will mirror each other depending on the lobby I'm in. If I find a lot of people are running charged with light builds or running thorn with necrotic grips, I will run tier 5 resilience and tier 9 mobility. If not, I'll spec for higher mobility. I always run tier 10 recovery no matter what. And for discipline, I'm running tier 5 which ends up being right in the sweet spot that we talked about earlier. Intellect is tier 6 and then strength is also tier 6. Overall, I like my build to be well rounded with spikes to mobility and recovery. Obviously, depending on if you're a Warlock or a Titan, you're probably not going to want to have max mobility, so you can spec that into either Intellect or something that will give you some better utility. Whisper of Shards can really put your stasis build over the top, especially if you're someone who likes to utilize their grenade a bunch. There's a ton of room for creative play by either using your Glacier Grenade aggressively to seek kills, or to use it more defensively and help you win duels more frequently. If you're looking for some exotics to pair with your build, I made a video recently going over the 10 best hunter exotics to use in PvP. Just click the video that's showing up on your screen right now. Thanks for watching and as always, we'll see ya.